In this section, I want to discuss beyond benzodiazepine discontinuation, how we can understand the life effects and support strategies for our patients. So from that benzodiazepine experience survey that I mentioned in the last section, we found that individuals that were experiencing negative effects of long-term benzodiazepine use and tapering and discontinuation endorsed a myriad of significant life effects from the symptoms they had. This included effects on pretty much every aspect of their life from impacts on their careers, losing income, losing insurance, class of health care, impacts on their relationship, involvement in judicial system, other disability and mobility issues, and then overall impact on confidence, self-esteem, and personality. When asked about consequences of withdrawal, you can see that the vast majority endorse these significant life effects of you know, not being able to enjoy their hobbies or recreational activities, impairing their social interaction and friends, their ability to take care of home and others, their work, their ability to drive or walk. I think of particular note is how many individuals endorse that their symptoms were so debilitating and had such a negative impact on their life that they had suicidal thoughts or attempted suicide. So 54% of the individuals over half reported that at some point in their process of benzodiazepine use, tapering, or discontinuation, they had suicidal thoughts or attempted suicide. So when looking at the life effect of suicidality, another study done by Dodds in 2017 reviewed 17 studies and found that benzodiazepines can be associated with increased suicide risk. The possible causes for this could be that the suicidal ideation is a side effect or withdrawal symptom contributing to intrusive thoughts about not wanting to live or taking one's own life. The individuals in the surveys, over 50% said they found support online and then support from a family or friend, and much smaller percentages reported getting support from psychiatrist, a general practitioner, therapist, or inpatient. Again, when thinking about the survey overall, it bears repeating that we are where a great limitation is as a self-selected respondent group who are already on this online support forum, Benzo Buddies, and we need more research to look at individuals across the range of benzodiazepine users to see how they are all affected and try to identify what makes some individuals more susceptible to a severe bind than others. However, that being said, I think it's extremely important that all prescribers are aware that the FDA did update their black box warning in 2020 for benzodiazepines in order to highlight that there is this risk not only of severe withdrawal, but of protracted withdrawal or bind. They didn't use the, the word bind, but because it didn't exist yet. So based on a report that the FDA completed after reviewing reports they'd received from individuals about harm from benzodiazepine, they updated the black box warning. The FDA review that led to the black box warning had several common themes, including harm from abrupt discontinuation, harm from rapid tapers, misdiagnosis of symptoms of withdrawal and protracted withdrawal, and escalating doses to try to treat symptoms that were later identified as being part of a withdrawal or protracted withdrawal. They also found that individuals that had been harmed by long-term benzodiazepine use were rarely ever cautioned about the potential long-term consequences, which again highlights the need to utilize a good informed consent process with patients about the short and long-term risks of these medications, just like we should be doing with other medications. And that the report found there was a real lack of medical support, that there was a failure to recognize physical dependence and tolerance in individuals taking these medications long term. The report also found that most people were finding their support in online support forums. Some alternative approaches, and just to touch briefly on how to best provide support to our patients, we certainly, we know that 
as I mentioned before, cognitive behavioral therapy has evidence for helping with benzodiazepine discontinuation. Cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia has great evidence for helping with insomnia. Finding a therapist that is educated about protracted withdrawal is great. If not, providing them with resources so they can educate themselves. As far as other alternative medicines to utilize, as we mentioned, there's not much that is evidence-based and nothing that is approved. So folks will read online of a whole variety of options from supplements, vitamins, herbs, CBT, melatonin, acupuncture, massage, homeopathy, functional medicine. And really it's, you know, takes a lot of trial and error. Reports of what works for one person doesn't seem to be helpful or maybe causes side effects or harms for another. So it's really advising our patients to proceed cautiously, trying one thing at a time and doing so with a trusted practitioner. I think the most useful thing we can do is really help provide and connect to our patients to good peer support options, as these are really the primary tool for ongoing support and can provide a lot of hope and validation. There's a variety of types of groups. The ones I would most recommend are there's Benzo Warriors, which is moderated by a group of individuals that have been affected, including a psychologist and I think they do a really nice job of moderating who belongs and what is discussed in the forum. The Benzodiazepine Action Workgroup at benzoaction.org, which is part of the state entity, the Colorado Consortium for Prescription Drug Abuse Prevention, has developed a peer support training program and is implementing that both within Colorado as well as now nationally. And you can find more information about that at benzopeertraining.org. And that will hopefully really fill some of this gap of need for peer support that is trained and more knowledgeable about these long-term effects of benzodiazepines and benzodiazepine discontinuation. Other coping skills and lifestyle modifications include looking at how to manage anxiety using acceptance, distraction, exercise, diet sleep hygiene, meditation, yoga, and stress reduction. And my colleagues that have been individually impacted by this really reiterate that peer support and validation is often the most helpful thing we can do for our patients. And I would just call your attention that the Benzo Action Workgroup does also have a peer support guidance document that you may find helpful in providing some resources for your patients. So overall, the key points in this section is that benzodiazepine-induced neurological dysfunction or BIND, the protracted withdrawal syndrome from benzodiazepines, can have significant negative impact on relationship and jobs. And unfortunately, many individuals report suicidal thoughts or attempts as a result of suffering from BIND. In September 2020, the FDA updated the benzodiazepine black box warning based on a report that they created about the increased risk of physical dependence and protracted withdrawal from benzodiazepines and the need for better education of patients as well as um, more gradual tapering. And we should keep in mind that patients suffering from buying benefit from diverse sources of support, including empathy and validation from medical providers.